Oh. Can you hear me? Grace and peace to y'all. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I was seven minutes of time in. And I told Mr. Warren in the back, say, you know, I said, now I'm getting nervous. And it got over when we got in praise and worship. I told Mrs. Thomas, I said, I'm getting nervous again. <laughs> and I look at my, my babies. Both of them told me, uh, one said, Poppy, uh, use, a use a paper clip and just hold it when you're nervous and stretch it. And the other one said, Poppy, get a rubber band and put it in your pocket and put it in your hand. <laughs> so, so what I did, I told Mrs. Warren to help me. I got both. I said, <laughs> When I look at them, <clears throat> where the Lord has brought us from and putting them in my life, uh, I had the privilege to uh, lift both of them up before the Lord. And I had the honor of baptizing both of them. When Raymond was two, just could walk, when I was quite three, I be in my prayer room. And I get up early, five o'clock, so it's been time in prayer. Raymond started walking, binky in the mouth. That little girl would come right in that room with me. I look and see her. She that binky in her gown on. She just sit there and rock. She was there for two hours, standing while I pray and read. And I said, Lord. Let me stop this because uh, I said, let, let, let her go. The Lord said, no, don't do no mess with her. I said, she get tired, she'll go. It went on. That, uh, that day was three hours. I couldn't believe that little girl. She didn't say nothing but stand there. Bless the Lord. Zaya come along. She do the same thing. <laughs> now, they don't say nothing, just sit there and rock. And I'm praying and trying to concentrate on what I'm talking to the Lord. They listen and just stay there. And I was amazed at what God was going to do in their life. That just blessed me. That blessed my life right there, that the Lord would give me two granddaughters that would listen to me pray and without interruption. So I understood what Pastor Clarence meant when Ada came, and Ada was under him all the time. He said, Dick, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, Oh, uh, he come, he over me, he get up the same time I get up and say, when I pray, he right there and said, I told him to go. I, I want to uh, make, make him go back and lay there and listen and also leave him alone. He's all right. So it's with that, looking at them and seeing where the time that the Lord had brought us to this point. Uh, When Pastor Clarence, I said this before, when he was uh, in school, uh, especially when he was in uh, uh, Hebrew, taking Hebrew and Greek, I think his class, that the class he was in, there was about 50 students in there. In, in both years, he came out tops. And so I told him one time, I. Minister Kelly there. So, you know, I learned from uh, Dr. John MacArthur. He said, I've been teaching the scripture from Greek and Hebrew from when I started, was 30 something years. He said, 25, 30 years. And he said, I don't know nothing. So I said, Lord, I got to learn Greek and Hebrew. So then I heard it from another minister. And I didn't see it there. So, uh, speaking, talking to Pastor Clarence, we going, I'm going with him on a trip, and I'm telling him about it. He said, Deke, they're absolutely right. He said, uh, you can't properly teach the word of God without knowing Greek or Hebrew. He said, not that it's something special. He said, they are the original languages. Right. And you have to know the depth of it. Well, when I, I asked him to do that for me, to teach me, he started teaching me. And then I told him to teach me how to exegete. And he said, he said Deke, why you want to exegete? I said, Pastor, I listen to you. And the things you pull out of a passage, that nobody can get out of. I said, I don't want to learn the Bible to get God to do something for me. 
I want to learn the Bible so I know how to do everything God wants me to do that he can get out of my life what he wants out of it because that's what I'm here for. Now, in learning that, I had to learn that a word of God is a precept. Precept is a word of God. Concept is a precept manifested. This is the concept, this is the precept manifested. This is what God worked. We have to get out of our mind that in calling this the Bible. This is what God thinks about everything. That's right. There's nothing that anybody ever been in earth or will be in the earth have any kind of thought, or any kind of problem that's not an answer for. You hear that? Now, when we get to the place where God is over here with a thing and we're over here with it, when we have a concept different from God's concept, there's misconception. And we have a high expectation of no information or wrong information or misguided information until we get it right. So then we can, we're looking for God to do something when we don't have the right understanding of what he said. For instance, uh, come to me, say it up. We have a habit as the people of God say, we cast all our cares on God. Cast all our cares on him, I'm paraphrasing, because he cared for us diligently. Okay. We want to cast without submitting or humbling. We don't go to the verse before which says, humble yourself and then cast. We want to, we want to cast something in an arrogant way before God. And the Lord teaches us how to come before him. Amen. Now, I got two uh, trans, uh, 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 words of the Lord here. Our reading Bible is the New King James. So, even though I got two, uh, another paraphrase version, I'm going to read some of it, but I want to bring out a passage of what, what uh, I want to bring some understanding to. Um, let's go to the book of Romans 8. And this is the New King James. Now, I have to say this, Minister Tomlin. March the 6th. <laughs> oh, 2017, on a Thursday at 11.30 a.m., I fell in love with the person of the Holy Spirit like I've never fell in love with him before. You say, have you never loved God? Of course, I thought I was in love with God. But I was there, I got up about 5 o'clock that morning, 5.30 to be before the Lord. I didn't know I was there that long. See, the Holy Spirit told me, pay attention to the time when this, when this happened. And when he showed me, he carried me to John. He said, I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. Y'all don't have to go there. Uh, in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, uh, in 15 through, through 18, he's, the Lord Jesus himself points to the Holy Spirit. He said, I got many things to say to you, but he said, you can't bear that. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll teach you and guide you. He goes further down to another place. He said, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to teach you this. He's going to point out this to you and point out this. He said, you don't know nothing. Then he goes to another place. This is three times the Lord Jesus. He said, it's expedient that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. So the whole purpose, the, one of the main reasons, the assignment of the Lord Jesus was to bring Holy Spirit in the earth. This is the person of Godhead who come to stay. Now, what are you saying? I said, Deacon Ron, yes. The Godhead, uh, their work, the work of creation. The Father's in the forehead, forefront, the Son and the Holy Spirit is in the bar, back. The work of salvation, the Lord Jesus is in the forefront, the Holy Spirit and the Father's in the back. The work of sanctification, the Holy Spirit's dispensation is now. The Father and the, Holy, and the Lord Jesus are in the background. This is Holy Spirit's time. Holy Spirit come to guide us, to lead us. The way the, the way the Lord Jesus lived in us, in our hearts, and also the Father is through the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to run. I want, with that said, about uh, we being one place and, and uh, the Lord being another place, I want you, want you to read with me this passage in Romans. In Romans 8, a little lengthy, but I'm going to, if you give me a little time, I'll bring out understanding to it. Uh, 
Let's go to verse 12. When you there, say amen. 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 Say, uh, verse 12. Therefore, I know y'all know when the word say therefore, he's talking about what's going on in the previous uh, verses before. Not only that, I love this passage, I love this book because the Apostle Paul, whom I love, the Lord Jesus appeared to him personally, the risen Lord, three separate times. That blowed my mind that the sovereign God of the universe, the risen Lord, would appear to a person. So much he had to do three times. So he, he comes to him and he teaches him because he goes out into the desert with him for three years. And when he comes back, this is the first book he writes. And he explains so much about what the Lord wants and our purpose and, and, and where uh, the Lord wants us to be in his purpose of bringing the uh, Holy Spirit to earth. And at 12, uh, verse 12, we say this. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live, according to, not, uh, to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, we will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now, it said the deeds of the body, not the flesh. He was saying. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Christ. Notice it, it says Jesus, it says Christ. I'm going to tell you that in a minute. If indeed you suffer with him, that you may also be glorified with together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy of not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation earnestly waits for revel for the revealing of the sons of God. I'm going ahead of myself. For, for the creation was subject to frailty, not willing, but because him who subjects it in hope. When Adam fell, he calls it, the scripture says, put a pen there, the scripture says that the creation didn't do nothing to, 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 for all this curse to happen to it. What God had given man, the authority that he given mankind of the earth, Adam, and, and, and I like what the Lord Jesus said to Apostle Paul, because he's going to tell him, he said, uh, Adam won't deceive. So Adam didn't do this blindly. Eve was the one that received. I'm not time to go into that. Because uh, <laughs> I don't want no women, the ladies to get upset with me. <laughs> oh. The creation failed to the fall because man had authority. Mankind had authority over all the earth. When the Lord said, let us make man, let us make him in our image, in our likeness, let them have dominion of the earth. He ruled spiritual life out of the earth without a body. Therefore, the Lord himself could not come into the earth with the permission of a person giving his body. Now, with that said, now remember now, when, when the Holy Spirit, when, 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 when man did what he disobeyed God, the Holy Spirit of God exited out of the earth. Yeah. So that left one spirit. And guess who that was? So you had no choice to do wrong. There was no, you had no way to get an understanding to do right because there was only a spirit of wrong and evil in the earth. And that's why the Lord had to get his spirit back in the earth. Now, that, that's free. Now, let's go. Uh, what we're talking about the creation. What's up now? Verse twenty-one. Because the creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, 
eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. <sighs> for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why do one still hope for what he, for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, one of the scriptures I want you to keep in mind, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groans which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, know what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called to his purpose according, according to his purpose. Call, according to his purpose, I got that wrong. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he predestined, those he also called, whom he called, those he also justified, whom he justified, those he also glorified. What shall we say then? What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, did it wrong? Why did you go there? In, you don't have to go there. In uh, Psalms 2, 1 through 3, it says, and I'll read it. So you won't, uh, y'all don't have to go there. I want you to, uh, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read this. Well, I'm going to read it from here. Psalms 2, 1 through 3. Why does the nation rage and the people plot in vain Plot vain things. The kings of the earth themselves, the rulers and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, all caps, Jehovah Elohim, and against his anointed, talking about the Lord Jesus. Now, the scripture said that in vain the world and everybody, all the rulers of it, is coming against the Lord. How does he come? How does it come against the Lord? They do nothing that he said. Because they're not his. They can't do it. They don't have the spirit to do it. Now, likewise, this is not also happening in the world. It's happening in the church. That's right, man. You understand? It's happening in the church. Now, so why did you say that? Okay, Hosea, there you can go there. Well, you don't have to go there. I just said, Hosea uh, in 4.6 said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Now, he didn't say the people in the world. He said, my people. He didn't say the people in the world perish of demons. He didn't say the demon, uh, that, the people, uh, that his people perish because of the devil. He said, for lack of knowledge. Now, so what do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Let's, <laughs> let's go to uh, Isaiah 55. Now, I want y'all to go there, because I'm going to read. Then This is why I have uh, the open Bible. The open Bible is not too much like a uh, uh, paraphrase. It's almost like the original. But anyway, let's go to uh, Isaiah 55. I believe I'm going to verses 9 through 11. Oh, 55, Isaiah 55. Yeah. Let's go to verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your uh, nor, are, nor are your ways my ways, per saying one thing and saying another. Uh, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher for the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and 
the snow from heaven and do not return there, but waters the earth and make it, bud, make it bring forth bud, that it might give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that with what I please, and it shall prosper in the things in which I send it. Now, in the open Bible, so I give y'all a better understanding of where I'm going with this. I want to read it. I like the way this is read, the, the reason in it. Okay. Uh, my thoughts are completely different from yours, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The rain and the snow come down from heaven and stay on the ground and waters the ground. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same way with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It accomplishes all that I want it to and it will produce everything and everywhere that I send it. Now, since we are the Lord's and we are, we name his name, and we come to the place to say what he say, if God's word is able to produce and bring forth what he wanted to bring forth, me and us being in line with him, then our life ought to produce the same thing. But when we are not where God wants us to be at and saying different from him, the Lord is over here with it and we're over here with it. We're looking for one thing. He's looking for one thing and you're looking for another because he expects us to grow. Now let's go back to our passage in Romans. This passage that's right here is one of the most wonderful passages in Scripture because the Lord is preparing us to how he wants us to receive. Now, if you're still going there, why are you going there? I want you to remember this. Numbers 23:19 is the hinge to eternity. That's right. Now, you know what a hinge is. A hinge go on the door. The door can't swing back and forth without a hinge. The hinge break, it ain't going to do nothing. Numbers 23, 19 is the hinge. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do, or have he spoken and will he not make it good? If the Lord God lied about anything, you can forget it. Because everything going to disappear anyway. He ain't going to be here. Now, on the same thing, same birth or, or, or breath, rather, Romans 12, 1 and 2 is the hinge for the believer's life. That's right. no. you, I, I said it, life, how a believer live. I present you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Right. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is God good and perfect and acceptable will. Now, that, this, this verse was brought there for two reasons. Now, uh, uh, if, if any of y'all remember, my, uh, my trial sermon was on uh, giving your battles to God. Now, these are the only two places where I see God say, prove me. Is in Malachi, when he said, prove me if I won't open up the windows of heaven. You must pay attention to that because you got Almighty God say, try me out and see what I will do if you do what I ask you to do. Don't listen to what nobody else say. Don't listen to your needs because I'm the one that made you. I got you. If I, you do what I tell you to do, just try me. Prove me. Prove me. I tell you what. And, and then he said, I will rebuke the revival for you. Now, I'm glad he said that and I'm glad y'all asked. 
because why he said that, I know you didn't. He said, that word, that word devour, uh, my wife didn't like this part. My, that word devour, if you ever, there used to be a movie out called The Fly. I think uh, Vincent Price was the original per, uh, actor, but anyway, it was redone. And The Fly, the reason why I uh, uh, use that example, a fly don't have teeth. It has secretion and solution. And when a fly get food or anything in its, in its grip, it put this, this secretion on it and it melts it. That's the same way what God is using when he said, I rebuke the devourer for you. Even though you think you're getting by, if you say you're a child of God and you trust it and you think things are going all right, but the scripture said, Minister, what it said, God laugh at you. Because he see right here, at, at, at 75 or 65, well, you think you're doing all right at 35 because God got time. God has given us all this promise, and Paul said that all the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. But the only promise God has not given us is time. Come on now. He didn't promise us time. You only have now. So you think you're going to have something for a later day? Jesus called me. He said, we said let, let me tell you what a man thinking like that. He said, oh, I got so much riches. He said, now, I got all this harvest coming, and this barn ain't big enough. I'm going to tear this thing down and build me another one so I can get all this money and stuff built up. Then I'm going to lay back and take it easy. Jesus said, the Lord Jesus said, you fool. <laughs> the night your life is required of you. Now, who will spend all that you got? So you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. So he says, it's a fool that get rich in the world and not rich towards God. Amen. The Lord calls him a fool. You understand? Amen. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when we give out, we that, to give our bias to God. Now, this passage is so misunderstood and taken out of content and context where we're going in that certain verses. It says this. It says it up. Likewise, in verse 26, let's go there. Where do I want to go up? Yes. Well, let's go up to 24. Hmm. Let's go to 22. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also uh, have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even ourselves grown within ourselves. That's hard. Eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. For we were saved to this hope. This is what we were saved for. When, when God saved, he wanted to bring us our bodies back, but a body like the Lord Jesus. That's another our message. Oh, well, we were saved for this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. So we can't see it. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly await for it with perseverance. Likewise, now this is the one of the misunderstanding uh, scriptures. Likewise, the Spirit himself I, I put that there, reading from another translation. Uh, uh, Likewise, the Spirit also help us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray at, uh, as we ought. But the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groans that we cannot utter. Now, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Very important. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. Now, the Lord said, who he already knew, he called. We have a tendency in the body of Christ to say uh, to each other, well, I don't know what my calling is. Uh, I don't know what my purpose is. 
Uh, the Lord has showed me my calling. Ladies and gentlemen, there ain't but one call. You call out a doctor, as Peter said, into his marvelous light. That's the only call you have. What's your purpose? To be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus. That's the only purpose we have. Out of that, you got an assignment to one of these yeah. mountains yeah. to show forth the, uh, uh, the glory of God. You go to one of these mountains, you either in business or, 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 or call them out, minister. There are arts in one of those mountains, and you show the character of the Lord Jesus by the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's what you're called it is. Wherever you're assigned to, you're assigned to be like Jesus. Now, we say this, uh, or people say this, though, well, uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called to the call of his purpose. Now, because we don't have an understanding of what the Lord is coming after. When you fall down and break your leg, just for an example, and you say, well, uh, Sister Brother said, you know, it's all good. It's going to work out for my good. You know, all things work together for good. That is a total misconception of what God is saying, and he's not there. We say we get in an accident or we lose some money and because we haven't took counsel or understanding what the Lord is saying. And then you see, say, well, you know, all things work together for good. It's in the love of God. That's not what God is talking about. The scripture says this now in verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, and I'm dropped down to uh, uh, in the, in, uh, 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 no, 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, those he called, those he also called, whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, those he glorified. Now, when you come to, go, go back to 29 or 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, there's a lot of people that name the name of Christ. Uh, I know he don't like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Minister Tommy was teaching uh, new, uh, new, not new members of uh, we, we call it kingdom training. And uh, he was talking about the character of some people that name the name of Jesus, and he don't like the name because associated itself with that. There were some questions about it because they didn't understand that in the scripture, Paul said, because they said, well, one person said, well, you're not supposed to judge. And I'm listening to this, the, the brother because we have to learn that the Lord, Je the Lord Jesus told the Apostle Paul, he said, now, you have to judge Christians in Corinthians. He said, you judge their character because how are you going to correct them? And we want to say, well, we're going to judge. That, that's not so. You do judge. You judge character. You don't judge heart because if you say that your life is changing the Lord Jesus, then it's supposed to show that. You know, and then if you, you're saying one thing, that's just like uh, Mr. Kelly, him and his wife, they got uh, their daughter. Their daughter going out there doing everything and anything that the enemy would have them to do, and they serving the Lord and want him want them to do it. And then they, they said, well, we saw your daughter out there doing this. She sure didn't act like no Kelly, because she ain't doing nothing that y'all do. That's the same thing the Lord is saying. When we name his name and don't do it, we don't act like it. And, if we, and the scripture said, if the spirit of Christ is not in you, then you're none of his. Because the Holy Spirit won't allow you to do those kind of things. So we question as the body of Christ when you do do those things because the Holy Spirit is a convictor, the Lord Jesus says. He catches you and calls you not to do those kind of things because God can't live with sin. He won't associate with sin, not even the smallest. Let, let, let me tell you something. You got to be out of your mind if you think you can do something. God killed his son so that we could live righteous. And, he, and Jesus, I want, you, I want you to get it wrong, Jesus, was, oh, Jesus had never had experience of being separated from the Father. When I saw that, I said, man, that scared me straight there. If God didn't want to be separated from God, then being separated from God got to be a terrible thing. Come on, huh? So when we don't, when we say we're one place, 
and we're not, and we do another. So it's questionable. Now, 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 why are we there? We got to know the spiritual world don't play games. They know when we're playing games and when we're not. They see, they don't say, oh, we're just joking because words are so powerful. Once they come out, they create images. Words are thoughts. And you think, the, the Lord Jesus put it this way. He said, a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bring forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasures in his heart, bring forth bad things. For he said, from out of the heart, the bun, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when a person, I learned this from my wife when I used to get drunk and say all kinds of things, she said, now I know how you really feel about me. I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> I, I said honey, I didn't say, she said, oh, no, no, no. She said, you drunk, so you speak your true heart. And, 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 and when we get upset and stuff, that stuff come out, it's how you really feel. But the Lord know the spirit, he know our heart, he know exactly what we're saying. And he know whether we hear or not. You know, uh, Peter, for example, thank you, Holy Spirit. Peter uh, denying the Lord when the Lord told him we were going to do it, he said he won't. So he go uh, following the Lord after, uh, before he denied me coming, and he followed him, and he go into the, this gate now. John was the one that knew the girl at the gate, and John got him to let him in. So he denied him three times, and uh, one of the places said, because he was a Galilean, she said to him, she said, now we know you was with him, because he said, you with him? He said, no, I won't with him. Then he goes another place, he said, we was with you, we know you. He said, no, I don't know you. I won't with him. He said, yes, you was with him. He, she said, because your speech betrayed you. Yeah, yeah. See, when you can't say one thing, your speech will betray you. Yeah. If you use the cussing, it's going to be hard for you to cover it up <laughs> unless you just stop. You know, you, 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 it's just going to come out. But see now, th this is how we do. We go with John's side. See, Peter betrayed God with words. John betrayed him with silence. See, John was right there. He was listening to him deny the Lord. A lot of us, we run people and we just let people deny the Lord and say anything, we betray the Lord with silence. We don't speak up for the Lord Jesus. But then we say, then we get by or now, get, get in our, at our own self in our little group and say, yeah, Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. But see, God know how false that is. And Lord, the Lord hates falsehood worse than anything. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? Please hear what I'm saying. Now, I got 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, this pass, back to the passage. Thank y'all for bearing with me. Oh, he said, who he foreknew? Uh, I'm trying to remember what Elder Ed was talking about, uh, the foreknowledge of God, what God had already predated. We were walking out. Mr. Solomon might say uh, Right now, in Romans 5, don't go there, chapter 5, verse 8, Pastor Clarence and I should go around and around with this, because it says, God, I like it in uh, uh, the old King James, God commended his love towards us. Now, you might see it watered down in other translations where he says demonstrated. That's a weak translation. Um, the translators was trying to help us to understand. And when the translators try to help you understand something, sometimes they weaken it, and you don't get the power that, of what God wants to get out of it. So uh, when he said he commended his love towards us, the Lord cannot look at sin at all. Don't think that when you have him come to the Lord, that the Lord is looking at your sin and putting up with it. When did the Lord Jesus, I'm questioning, don't, 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 don't be afraid to answer. When, if you understand it, when did the Lord Jesus Christ die? When was he crucified? Huh? What? Don't speak all the one time, but speak all the one time. When was the Lord Jesus Christ crucified? Before the foundation of the world. Before anything or anybody 
the Lord, in the divine counsel of God, the Lord Jesus himself said, knowing that man was going to fall when they make him, already set a lamb in place, which is the Lord Jesus to come. So God himself, this is a tremendous passage. God himself loved us so much that he slayed the Lord Jesus before the foundation of the world that when sin would come in, he could look at the blood of the Lord Jesus in, in, in eternity future and see before we roll it out. Some a person asked me, said, well, if the Lord know all the things he's going to sin, or, or, or why did he go along with it? And I was before the Lord in the back there and, and praying. The Holy Spirit said, look, said, uh, the enemy knew what man was going to do. Say, so even though I did, I know, like uh, 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 Abraham, scripture said, Abraham, uh, when, when, when he went, went, uh, went through going through issues, of, of the emotions of, of killing his son, that the Lord stopped him. And the Lord said, it pleased him. I said, Pastor, didn't the Lord know he was going to He said, sure. But he said, Dick, he, did, he experienced it. And I said, what you saying? He said, uh, I said, well, he experienced it. He said, no, he didn't experience him going through. Yes, he knew he was going to do it. But the enemy, mm-hmm. when, we, when we get baptized, we come out, we, we uh, announce to heaven who we are, but we denounce the world. The enemy has to see our obedience to God. And Abraham's obedience, yes, it pleased God that he was obedient to him that the enemy couldn't shut him up. So the Lord, going before us, before we came, had blood in place that he could look innocent to where he could put up with us looking for the time that Jesus would come and would save her. I know that's deep. It's a lot. We had to do a lot of teaching on that, but you must get that. This is a must. Now, uh, the four knowledge, we're going to the four knowledge. Now, We've been before the Lord, which was his habit, uh, when God came on, when the Holy Spirit came on like that. And he said, Lord, it wasn't for us, it was for him. But he asked for forgiveness for us. And instead, he said, forgive us. Forgive us for thinking that our little puny English language can put out the depth of the Hebrew and the Greek. He says, to know exactly what you mean. That got my attention. This word is one of those words it is so rich in Greek that there's no English word that can even touch it. We can't even find nothing to come near. What the Lord is saying here, as the Lord, is the same word he used when he's talking about the Lord Jesus uh, being like us. He's going to essence. He's talking about our essence. God predestined us in spirit to be like the Lord Jesus. Not, not to look like and act like, but he's talking about character. And he, pre- he, he pre- predestined us. He always wanted us when he was bringing us forth. He always wants to have a character like the Lord Jesus. In heaven, there is no resistance to the will of God. There was one person, that, one uh, spirit that did it, and he came out there out of, out of the, the speed of thought. He never said it. He thought in his heart, I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to do this. And he was out by thought. That he didn't even get it out of his mouth. So the Lord God would tolerate no resistance to his will. We say now the kingdom of God has come to earth. We don't obey, obey God worth for a squat. And he have to tolerate it. I, I, I don't know how God do it. 
I don't tolerate my children being going back to talking back to me and doing what they want to do. I just don't do it. I let them go for a little bit. But then you, you better know who you're talking to. Because <laughs> you're going to straighten that thing up quick. Huh? Because all uh, oh, this minister, I used to tell my daughter when she said she get upset, she's going to raise her hand. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, but this, what, where, where I'm going with this, we have to get to the place to know that God said what he said. He'll do what he's going to do. And he loves us because he wants us to have the best. We don't even know what good is. Uh, we, we say, you know, the Lord is good. And I tell Pastor Clinton, I say, he better than that. that don't, don't you know there's a word better than good and we haven't got it yet? Paul said, I heard things that weren't even lawful for men to even speak. They don't even know how to speak these kind of things. Ezekiel said, I, I saw a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He saw stuff he didn't have words for. If God, the Lord God, have given us a language where we can say good, don't you know there's a word that's greater than that? My God, my God. And we limit him like that. Especially when he predestined us to be like Jesus. The Lord Jesus. My God. Because he, who he foreknew, he predestined. If I used to tell my daughter this. She said, uh, honey, she said, daddy, uh, People said they do things and the devil made them do it. I said, honey, the devil didn't make nobody do it. They, they did only what uh, the desires was in their heart to do. I said, if the devil do something to you, he'll have you disfigured. he had you had eyes under the bottom of your feet, mouths everywhere. I mean, he will have you in such a disfigured way that wouldn't nobody want to look at you. If, you know, we, we, we think that... Uh, we talk about a man with uh, somebody with horns and stuff like that. No, no, no. It ain't don't come like that. Uh, however, we have to know and understand that we cannot keep playing church and get by. I had an uncle who used to say all the time, say, you might get by, but you won't get away. And all we do is get by a lot. But there's time coming. Time has come, comes away where there is no more time. You understand? And what the enemy said, uh, I, I think it was the fellow that told me, say, uh, uh, the enemy said, uh, the Christians, how in the world are we going to stop them? So one of his generals said, I know. We'll tell them that the Lord is lying. He said, they ain't going to do nothing. They ain't going to do nothing at all. He said, they ain't nobody in that. He said, I know what to do. I know what to do. Well, why don't we just put a lying spirit in their mouth? He said, well, that ain't going to work. That didn't work. Another one came up in the background. He said, uh, I know what we should do. He said, what's that? He said, let them know the truth, but tell them they got time. He said, that'll work. That'll work. Tell them they got time. And we don't have nothing but now. When are we going to get that? We don't have the marvel to praise the Lord. We only have now. Yes, God has given us things that we come to, but we only have now. Who say you're going to get to be 100 years old? But there is good news for the gospel. Because I know in, 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 in the 29th, I mean, the 91st Psalm, I love that. The first verse in the 91st Psalm names four names of God. That blows my mind that God would have a man like David to know his character, to call him Elohim, call him El Shaddai, call him El Elyon, and call him uh, 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 Yahweh Jehovah in one verse. You know how many that kind of character God is to experience that? And look, we ain't even got to the millions of other names God is. We sung a song. What we said, I am. God, God said, he said, I am. 
what, what, whatever you want me to be, I, I am. He said, you want to say, who sent you? I, I am. I am. I am that I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, this passage we must stop taking out of content and content. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called to the calling of his purpose. His purpose is predestination to the Lord Jesus. So everything, when we get in trouble, uh, we make a wrong decision. If you're in the Lord Jesus, you might, uh, w- was going to buy a house, I'm just using this, uh, say next year, and you get turned around in something, and your funds get messed up because of, of foolishness and not putting it before the Lord, well, you don't get the house for five years from now. That's the kind of thing God work out for is good because he's after you being like Christ. He don't want you to go stealing to get it. He just worked things out so you get the house because there he got to go another way to do it because you messed up the way that he was going with your smarts. You know what I'm and the scripture said, the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. So we take our foolishness and think we're smart in the world. And now we got to wait and hope that we make it to there. And see, what the enemy do is keep you messing up because he's not omnipotent. He don't know when your time is up, but he knows there's coming a time. So what he tried to keep you doing is getting messing around, messing around, till your time is up for the point the man wants to die in his judgment. So it's appointed to die. You hear what I said? It's appointed to everybody to die. So but we don't know when. And so what the enemy do is keep you guessing when. Or that, not thinking that you got time. You got time. Um, I want to say this. With respect totally of Lady Sharon and my love for my pastor and my respect for him and my honor for him. This man had an impeccable character before God. I never seen a man walk before God like he did. And the Lord, when I went to the Lord before, the Lord said, you thought I had you before him for 28 years to learn how to read in, in the gospel. He said, I put a character before you that I wanted you to be conformed to. That's what I want you to pick is his character. This man had a character, I'm going to say, when uh, years ago we was in the shopping center. No, we was in school. We had a speaker come, uh, Pastor Franklin, one of his friends, Kirk Franklin. I think that's his name. That's his name, Sister Sarah? Uh, Kirkland, Pastor Kirkland. He said, before he spoke, he said, right, Elder? He said, Pastor, he said, let me, he said, let me, let me tell you something about your pastor that you don't know. He said, we was in Omaha. He was there. He was walk, we were walking down the street. And your pastor stopped to get a newspaper. He said he got a newspaper. He put his money in and said, and when he got the, the, the machine open up, said when it opened up, the, the door fell so hard to all the money fell out the machine. He said, do you know your pastor? got down on his knees, and he said money was everywhere. Crawled around and got every one of those coins and put it back in that machine, put the papers in it, and locked it, just took what he had with the paper that he paid for and walked away. And he said, uh, how many of y'all know you would have said, look what the Lord have given me. <laughs> <laughs> but he still he said this. But do you know that would have been stealing? Because it didn't belong to you. His character was so that he wouldn't take a penny. Great God Almighty, that man. Anyway, where I was going with this, Pastor Bones in the back said we were praying. He said, you know, and I know it hurt him to say it. He said, Pastor going home and be with the Lord should have put a wake up call in this church that we don't have time. 
that we play too much. We don't pay attention to the Lord. Not that pastor didn't do that, but we don't know when time is. We don't know every day is a closer day to our departure out of the earth. Every day. We don't, you know what? You don't have the time that you had when you walked in here this morning. You'll never see that time again on this side. Never. And the Lord is wanting us to see where he has predestined us to come to and to understand because he got plans for your life. Yes. He got a great plan. You don't even know what the Lord wants to do. The Lord got so much good for you because I heard Elder Ed say years ago and I caught it and I had to look at it. He said, praying, he said, Lord Jesus, you got goodness oozing all out your paws. I said, now, in the God of Spirit, he ain't got no paws. And the Holy Spirit said, yeah, but Jesus got a body. And his body got paws. And I said, he got, and we got paws all over our body. And when I called, they said, Jesus got love or goodness and love pausing all out of his body. I said, my God, my God. So you don't know the depth of the goodness that God has for your life. Don't go out prematurely because you want her well done. I'm going to say that again. Don't do things and call yourself to do things that carry you out prematurely. The Lord said in Psalm 91, which I, I, I rehearse for him every day, because you know my name, I give you long life. But knowing his name is not saying El Shaddai or El El It's knowing the character of the name. And well, I'm not going to go there. I'm closing. In, in, in uh, uh, Psalm 138, the, the Lord talk about how he had magnified his word above all his name. And I heard people say, God, the Lord magnified his word above his name. He didn't say that. He said all. And when God say all, he mean all. You got, the Lord God have more names. If you was here a hundred trillion years, you wouldn't experience all of God's names. But he put his word above that. And if we grab hold to his words, Pastor James would say all the time, he said, you know, all the, the, the uh, uh, Israelites wanted to do was get to God said. If they got what God said, hear God say something, so they had it. And that's what we ought to be a people about, getting to God said. Once we get caught, nothing can stop you. If you get a promise to God and hold on to it, Nothing can take you out till God fulfill that promise. Don't you know that? He have to do it or he'll be a liar. You have to get hold of things that God said so he can fulfill them or else you can make him out a liar. And God won't be lied to. And he won't be lied at and he is not a liar. It's impossible for God to lie. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's impossible for God to lie. When the Lord told me while I was before him, he said, uh, I'm going to show you something. He said, I'm going to open up the word of God to you like I opened up the peanut to George Washington Carver. That blew my mind. I said, I just want to know it. I want to know how to obey you. Uh, Christmas, have, you know, my babies is here. And, um, and my, my daughter, was all three of us here, and spending time with them and the, the night going by with some things, we got them, we didn't want to send them out until they go to bed, and they're older now, and so we still don't want go, to have total expectations of everything. We like to see their face when we surprise them with things. And so uh, the day went on, I went and got my mother-in-law, and we spent some time together. I carried her back home, but when in that, I said, all right, I have not spent no time before you today. This is ridiculous. Uh, that's okay. When I carry my mother-in-law home, I don't want to interrupt them. I'm going to go down to the building. So I said, I'm going to get my books together, and you show me what you want me to talk about. And, and I said, I want you to explain some things to me. I got my books together. I carried my mother home. I called, and I said, honey, I said, I'm going to be at the church for a little while. 
She said, what happened then? Something happened then? I said, no, I said, I just need to pray a little bit. So I'm down here about an hour or so. Never happened before, all the times I do. Oh, uh, I got a phone call from at an ad. Well, I don't usually keep my phone on when I'm praying. Uh, and that, I said, well, they there by themselves, and I don't know what happened. They called. I want to be able to answer. So the phone rang, and I saw Ella. I said, hey, Ella, something like that. He said, uh, think around. I said, yeah. He said, yeah, the church. I said, yeah. I said, come down here to the wall for the prayer. He said, well, some people passed by the church and said, the lights is on, and uh, a van is down there, and we don't know what's going on. But my point is that at any other time, and many times I, call, I get up, my wife and I get up 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and come in here and pray the rest of the night. Uh, I leave about 10 o'clock or so like that, and I come home about one, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. But well, my point is that I'm, I'm very disciplined in this, and I love it. I'm disciplined. I'm going to read. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to be before the Lord to talk. I'm very, this, this is my, I can't see myself. I saw years ago. I said, Lord, forgive me for being so arrogant before you to think that. Just, you're going to carry, you who give me activity of limbs, octillery of speech, favor during the day, and not even say hello to you. It'll never happen again as long as the days I live. I will be before you. And what I, when now when I open up my, my eyes, the first thing I do, I know I have to start praising her. And then, then I get before me and I got a melody of song. Uh, when I pass into your presence, pass the gates of praise into your sanctuary till we stand in face to face. I look upon your countenance. I see the beauty of your grace. And I can only bow down and say, yeah. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. That's just a habit. I'm not telling nobody to do that. That's just me. But you have to learn that we cannot say it is in him we live and move and have our being and not pay him any attention at all. It's God we live and God we die. The Lord saved us not to die but to live for him. And he's given us directions how to go. And these passages, we must stop taking them out of content and context. We must understand what the Lord is saying. What the scripture said, uh, 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 for we are, uh, 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 for, well, if, if you in Christ, being the oh, Holy Spirit, <laughs> that, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'll get it. I'm going to start. It, it's chapter 8. I'm going so fast, I got things on my heart. I'm trying to. No, I'm trying to put him down and say, therefore, now, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we let it stay there. And that is condemnation. If you don't know, you just can't go off and say, there is now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. So finish it out. Because there's a condition. God's promises are conditional. His love is not but his promises are, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. There is a condemnation not walking in the Lord. You understand that? So, bless you. So please, when you pick up the word of God, pick it up on purpose to know what he's saying. To do what he's saying to do because what you do, it ain't going to work. The Lord said, my people perish because of ignorance of my word. And they don't know why they're perishing because they think they can do anything. There's, there's a passage out, me and Mr. Uh, Kelly, him and his wife, there, I, I love him so much. He's, my, he's, he's a minister to me also. He's my friend, but he happened to be my Bible. So I got three in one. <laughs> oh. So we, we talk a lot, and, and he, he ministers to me. He helps me out a lot. That I can, he's a sounding board for me a lot, too. But we get together, and we talk, and, we, and when, we, when uh, we get scripture together, he challenges me, and I like that. I like that a lot. But I want to acknowledge him, him and his wife coming here this evening.
this morning and taking the time out. He's a very busy person, and I thank God for him coming here. Uh, I bring this to a close. I got so much to say, and uh, and 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 uh, I want to. I'm trying to keep. I want to keep it short, but then I don't want to keep it short. I want when when, when I come out of Mount Gilead. One of the things I do come out of Gilead. I started learning about Dr. Miles Monroe, and he was at a, 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 a rock church. And Doreen, I used to go over there. I was hungry for God. And see, when you go to listen to Dr. Miles Monroe, you got to bring your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. Because he don't stop. He just go. And when you get used to that, you want to get uh, the understanding of what God's saying. You don't just get a happy feeling to go, well, what I want to know is how do I apply this? Teach me how to apply this. Because I just want to hear something and just uh, to get a happy word. And then the enemy is wrecking havoc in my life because I got a word and don't know how to apply it. So teach me how to apply it. So, oh, Father, we give you praise and we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word that you continue to give us, that you put above all your name. As we grab hold to it, Holy Spirit, you're waiting for the word of God to come out of our mouths that you move on it in our lives. Lord, I said a lot of things to them from your word. And if I say one thing that isn't true about you, then let my tongue cleave to the top or the roof of my mouth and never come down again. However, being it is all that you have said, cause your word to take root in their life. That they come forth or shine in the stars as which you have already predestined. Grab and hold to all that you want them to do, Lord God. That you are glorified in their lives. This day is the first day of the rest of our life. We'll never see this day on this side again. But when the books are open, this day will be brought before us. And I pray that the Lord help will say everything that we did in it was to his glory. You've heard things, maybe for the first time, or maybe not like you heard it before, or maybe in a different way, but in but, but being all said, said with all that said, you've heard some things of the Lord. And maybe you haven't wanted to trust the Lord before and thanking God that from his word going forth that you've heard something from him, not from me, from him that caused you to want to walk with him. If that's you, please stand. I say stand because you can't sneak up on God. You got to come publicly. Thank you, Lord. Father, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've accomplished. You know when the time is right, you said some, uh, sow some water, but you're the one who get the increase. Thank you for the increase of your word that's coming forth today out of each and every life. We give you praise for it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. You know, I hope everybody captured some nuggets. There was a ton of them that came out today. I just want to tell you, Minister Ron, awesome first sermon as a minister. There's a lot of rich food that we all needed to hear. I hope who needs it, take it, chew it, digest it, let it circulate through your spirit. It's been an awesome day. I know we've been here for a minute, but you know what? I don't put no time in on God. This needed to come out the way, this is your day, and this is the way this word needed to come out. And I need to reach what I need to reach, and I thank God for you. I thank God that he saw fit. I heard Desiree speak it. AJ ain't nothing but a number. There's so much in you. 
Amen. Did everybody receive?